this is what it looks like. First man on the river today. This video is going to be a little bit different, not so much about backpacking. I'll show you what it is about. One really cool thing about sleeping in a bivy is sometimes your bag will have a left zip and the door will be on the right zip. Or like the new tent I have, the new Terra Nova, the door is on the right. You can only sleep one way. It's small at the bottom, large at the top. The door's on the right. Almost all of my zippers on my bags are on the opposite side. And I tend to sleep on my left side. So my back is to the door. Which, getting up in the morning to cook is kind of a pain. But in a bivy, let me show you something. Not all bivvies, but I know in this one. This zipper goes up all the way around. There are actually four zippers. So you can do any configuration, any possible way. So you can open it up. You can cook right here on your left hand side, you can cook on your right side, sleep on your left, sleep on your right, however you want to sleep. I'm going to make some coffee, get breakfast going, and hit the river. Hmm, what strange sort, kind of pants are these? <laughs> waders and these are wading boots the felt is to keep you from slipping on the moss nothing like a hearty breakfast for a, a day on the river you, you can't really beat steak and eggs for um, waking up next to the river to go fly fishing and there's breakfast hey Colin recognize that <laughs> bet you never thought it'd be used for steak and eggs getting into fly fishing completely different from spin fishing or bait fishing uh, there's no bail on the reel you don't use a weight to propel your lure your line is your weight propels the fly your flies wet dry nymphs streamers poppers um, your leader your tippet your rod. So from your fly reel, you got a, a tapered leader, which is usually seven to nine foot. Something like this, you want to use like six foot. And the tippet, the leaders are uh, a little expensive for what they are. They start off one diameter and go down to a smaller diameter, so they're five or six bucks each, a good one. So you use tippet, a lighter line, from the end of the leader to the fly. That way as you're changing flies or knots or anything else, you're chewing up the tippet, which can be replaced, saving your leader. Uh, now, this here is my uh, rod of choice for streams and for light. Trout, bluegill, small bass. It's a Winston 2.8. But if you're just getting into it, just stay completely away from this. These are pretty delicate rods. You got a lifetime guarantee, but you, you pay for that. Weighted flies. These are all dry flies. Hoppers, ants, mosquitoes. Up here in the San Gabriels, these trudes. Lime trudes, royal coachmans. They work very well. I, on there right now, you won't be able to see it, I don't think. Right there. I have a gold ribbed hair's ear. A size 16 it's a small fly and I know I'll take some trout on that so I'll demonstrate that in a few minutes got it small one but here he comes third cast oh look at this your first look at a natural oh he's a beautiful one though look at this look at how beautiful that is rainbow baby rainbow look at that look at how cool they look You want to get them off, touch them as least, least as possible, get them off as fast as possible, and get them back in the water. Okay, we got three casts, I believe. I've missed three and caught one. Hmm. 
Here's another one. You know, still look at that. You can see. I don't know if you can make it out, but the purple, the green, the yellow. It looks like this area here has only got some small ones. I'm going to go further down the river. When you see places like this, where it's carved out from underneath, dug out back here, this is not from the river. This is people digging this out, bringing it down here with sluice boxes and panning for gold. This is the main river for go getting gold up here. East Fork is the number one river for getting gold in the San Gabriel. Dating all the way back to the early 1800s and still today. They've never found the main vein. They've never found the place where the gold is coming from. But you rarely see anybody panning above the narrows. When you're coming to an area like this, you see how it's really rough right in here and then right over there there's a little flat glassy spot you want to drop your flying just above that when it goes down you will get a hit when there's branches overhanging like this you walk up to them and you look and, and then when the sun's out and you try to see what kind of bugs on them I mean the grasshoppers ladybugs whatever fly you see you want to match the hatch you want to look in your fly box and you want to find something that looks as close as possible to any insects you're seeing in the area because that's what the trout are going to be feeding on. He's small. He's probably smaller than one of those little gummy fish that we they used to sell in stores. He's the size of a Rapala. So these are just common reeds at the top here, these brown things. They look like cigars or sausages. Those are cattails. And when those are dry, those are really good for fires. They come apart and make like a cotton. It's really fine, like a down. But at the base, when you pull these up, that root is edible. They say it tastes like celery if you boil it. I've never boiled it. I've cleaned it and tasted it. It's kind of bitter raw. But I guess it's full of carbohydrates and it is edible. In case you're ever hungry. <laughs> Caught without food. Now you hold the line when you go back. When you go forward, you let when it goes forward like a whip, you let a little bit out. You grab it, back, forward, let a little bit out. There at the end, you let go and just let it all shoot. That's why when you're at the fly shop, you'll see something that says shooting head. That means the uh, it's weight forward. The front of the fly line is tapered the, the last 10 feet or so, thicker than all the rest. So the weight is forward to get you distance. Oh yeah, there's a nice hit, a nice hit. And he's on there, but he's small. He, at least he hit hard though. I gotta give it to that little guy. <laughs> this little minnow. <laughs> Looks like I'm fishing with a Rapala lure. Look at that. There he is. I think that's 19. We got a few more down there, same size, all about like this. Oh. Gotta get out of here pretty soon. Back to work. Smokes back there. That might be a good place to hang the hat in the Hennessy hammock. Let me go scout that out real quick before I get out of here. And then I gotta go. Check out the shadow.
Look, I found an ear on the ground. <laughs> Looks like it. Oh, a deer! A deer. There's a deer. Oh, full grown, huge deer. Definitely a good place. Let me take this off the tripod and see if I can get it. How cool is that? Okay, he was right here. And he ran up there. He's up there somewhere. I didn't hear him continue. He's up there just hiding out somewhere. Waiting for me to leave. Hopefully he doesn't have a, a fawn here. Otherwise he'll be back to open up a can of whoop ass on me. I don't think many people have been back here. There's some huge spider webs blocking the trails. Hey, he's right up here somewhere. I think you guys got a glimpse of him. I know you probably heard him. He was big. He had some big antlers. He's up there somewhere. Look at how thick it is back here. The ground is just soft with so much foliage over the years and acorns and uh, I don't know where he went that was cool though there's no way I'd start a fire back here though and there's no way I'd do a night hike back here oak poison oak poison oak poison oak poison oak Oak, 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 completely surrounded. But you know what? In the near future, I'm gonna come up here and gather a bunch of these acorns. And I'm gonna try, I went to the La Harbor Library and got a book about Indians, uh, Native American Indians in this area and their recipes. And I got the recipe for the bread. I'm gonna try to make some bread. Look at this really cool spider web. Look at that, that work. Let's put into that. What does it say? Some pig. Charlotte? <laughs> Small snake just went by. Not a rattler, a garter. I'm gonna go around the other side of the, oh. Here's the, there's a deer trail. How awesome. Let me see where it goes. Yeah, this is definitely the place for acorns. Yeah, that deer, there's no way he made it up that hill. He's back there somewhere. Just hiding out. Laying low. Okay, my end count was 30. Started fishing there where I slept in the morning. And I worked my way all the way down down and around out catching the majority of my fish in this area right here right down here I pulled out about 11 in a row biggest one was about like this I got one bigger one down here about seven inches that was about my uh, lunker of the day like I say it's just get out have some fun keep in practice enjoy the silence the solitude and then back down and to work used to see these a lot growing up where I lived now you don't see them at all they were commonly called alligator lizards because they look like an alligator they're really cool we used to keep these as pets we used to keep these as pets when I was smaller they bite, but they don't hurt. See, watch. See, they, they bite, but they don't hurt at all. They're non-poisonous. Anyway, he's really cool. Put him back. It's been a long time since I've seen one of those. They're extinct in Orange County. So I'll tell you what, if you guys like that fly fishing videos, the next trip I'm going to do uh, won't be for about a week, 
I'll have a backpacking trip in between now and then. But it's going to be up the North Fork. Real historical area. Where a bunch of cabins used to be before the flood hit in 38. I always remind you guys about that flood in 38. It's a big historical changing event up here in the San Gabriels. Everything changed then. Um, so I'll fly fish amongst these houses. I'll show you where these people lived. I'll show you how they lived. The rivers and a few really cool modernized cabins that are still up there to this day. So go ahead and make a comment. And as a matter of fact, if you're not a subscriber, go ahead and subscribe. If you like what you see, you can also put in requests. I'll do request videos too. If there's an area on the map you want to see, a technique you want to see, something you want to see, something I've touched on, and you want to learn further about it, let me know. It's all part of the fun. I'm going to try further down river. Got him. 31. So that's it for this trip.